Welcome back to another episode of Scott Talk, where we sit down with members of the College of Worcester coaching staff and get to know them. I'm Jack Gilloth, a junior business econ major and a member of the men's varsity soccer team. I'm joined today by Andy Zidron, who's in his sixth year leading the Flying Scots. Thanks so much for joining us, Coach Zidron. Absolutely, Jack. Thanks for uh, helping out, and thanks to uh, Kevin Smith and Matt Anderson for putting this together. They're doing uh, a lot of creative things, a lot of work, given the, uh, the circumstances. So happy to be here, and uh, it's always good to see you, even though it's remote, my guy. Yeah, it's great seeing you too, Coach. Uh, to begin, can you talk a little about your coaching philosophy and the environment you try to create? I would love to, Jack. And what's funny is, is I was reading and prepping for these questions in my head. I thought, Jack, you should answer these questions. And uh, that way people have an idea from the player's perspective. But I'll, uh, I'll do my best and feel free to, uh, to chime in if there's anything you want to add to that. So um, I think from a, from a coaching philosophy perspective, it's very, for us, very much about being a part of something bigger than yourself. Uh, it's a very family-oriented program. Uh, Jack, as you know, we live a mile and a half from campus. And uh, that's that's done intentionally so we can you know share life with the guys and be a part of the campus community and so I think first and foremost our recognition that this is more than soccer and that we hope that we're preparing men to be you know good scholars good competitors but then most importantly you know good people and good husbands good fathers good partners uh, good workers and you know whatever they do if that's med school if that's graduate school if that's the workforce um, that we're preparing them to be the best version of themselves. So philosophically, that's a super important thing uh, for us is that, that, that family feel and that it's, that's bigger than just the white lines in the locker room. So the other part, which I know you know about and kind of you can see over my, would be my right shoulder uh, here and over my left on the screen um, would be this, this slogan, this we work hard, this we as a family, we're going to work and we're going to work hard. Uh, it's nothing flashy. It's not bells and whistles, but it's very blue collar and is a, is a group we bought into that. And I love that philosophically uh, the guys love to work hard, hard works, hard work, and, and we like to do it. And I think it's paid dividends for us um, as, as a group. And I think it's, it's helped us academically. It's helped us socially. And so that's a, a pretty unique thing too. And then the other two pieces uh, philosophically, we talk a lot about, you know, that 1%, you know, we have that little 1% in the locker room that you guys joke about, but can we be just a little bit better today in whatever we're doing, whether it's, on the field, in, the, in a relationship, academically, in an econ course, uh, things like that, and hopefully creating an environment where it's self-accountability to be better. Um, it's not just driven by me, but it's driven by the players uh, to each other, and then internally that they want to become the best that they can be, just give a little bit better over time. That that 1% makes up, uh, makes up a big difference. And then lastly, as you know, Jack, we're, we're all about servant leadership and serving other people and trying to use our talents and our leadership to make them better. And so we, um, you know, it's kind of a little bit of a paradigm shift, but the philosophy is everybody leads in our program, whether you wear a captain's armband or you're a first year student, you have a standard to bear and you have gifts and strengths that you utilize. And so um, we hope that our guys do that, excuse me, do that and can uh, and buy into that. So um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of philosophically where we're at. So I don't know, Jack, if you have anything to add to that or any questions to elaborate on that? No, I think you hit it, uh, hit it right there. Perfectly said. Couldn't say it better myself. Uh, excellent. I, I think the last thing I'll add too is it's always kind of, you know, our culture is this breathing, driving force. You know, that's like my, my jam, you know, my sacred cow. You know, I'm, I'm constantly, and Devin and I are talking to you guys about the importance of who we are as a group and, and how that's going to pay dividends in the long run. But, you know, as I've, as I've shifted things and it gets tweaked every, every season, every year, one of the big things I've come up with, and I want to say it here, it's this, this concept of Ubuntu. And um, it's a Zulu phrase that essentially means I am because you are. You know, I'm Coach Zitteron because of Jack Yellowth, all right? And you're Jack Yellowth because of the guys in the locker room and the people on campus that you interact with. And so um, I think one of the things we've got to remember is our legacies and our relationships. And I think that helps drive us as a program recognizing again going back to this is this is more than soccer you know we're gonna become our best for ourselves but more importantly to, to help other people out and um you know obviously we want that to translate to success on the field too to you know the uh the fun part of winning games and competing at a high level which um which i think we we've done in in recent recent seasons yeah for sure i've definitely had the the joy to experience the culture aspect of our team for the past three years so good the last thing I'll say, and I'll give Jack a little shout out here. Our, our son is nine. And during this, this COVID year, I, you know, didn't coach a lot of Worcester, unfortunately. Um, and so I got to coach our nine-year-old son a little bit more. And Jack and some of the uh, other student athletes and some of their friends came out to one of Owen's games. And um, it was a treat for, for me to watch them be a part of that, you know, just a, 
to share life with Owen and share life with us and celebrate him after the game and just talk with him and, and hang out a little bit outside. So that's, uh, again, you know, what we're about and that guys want to do that and, and be a part of that. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, it was a, it was a very entertaining game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So follow up. Uh, what are you looking for out of prospective scots and what can they expect from the program upon the sure. students? That's a, that's a great question. I think one of the first things, and when we sit down with the young men that are interested in the college or that we're interested in, we do talk about these culture things and we want young men that buy into that and um, see value in that. And so, you know, that's on paper, it looks great, but you know, how do we, how do we find that, you know? So when we watch young men, we, we look for guys that are gritty. We look for uh, young men that want to work hard, that how they respond in to, to bad situations in a game when they're on campus, how they communicate with me or coach Devin or, you know, what the players say when they, when they sit down and do an overnight or sit down and have a meal. So, you know, we're looking for ultimately good people and um, good people are going to make better Scots. Um, you know, that sounds like a, you know, a catchphrase, but like if we can develop better people, then we're going to develop better Scots. So, um, and so I think for, for us, we're looking for that, that cultural piece first, that character piece first. Um, just recently, I, I, I got to do a little recruiting recently. And after the game, I was communicating with, with a young man that um, had, uh, has already applied, great young man, but he was one of the few people I saw actually picking up after himself after the game and carrying the team's Gatorade to the huddle. And, and I, that's the only thing I talked to him about. I didn't talk about his play, but I was like, hey, I noticed you were the only one that, you know, like helped serve your team. And he goes, you know, whatever it takes. And so that's what we're looking for. And then, of course, we want, we want competitors. You know, we want guys that, that want to get after it and are hungry to play and, you know, how we like to press. And so we want guys that want to defend and not just uh, play on the offensive side of things. So uh, I think one of the things to expect is high standards and to be pushed. Um, we do have high standards that are reflected not only on the soccer field, but I think academically and socially, uh, we hold ourselves to a very high standard and, and very rigorous structure in, in a lot of ways. And I think that helps us as a group thrive and um, understanding that, that we can always do more and always give that, you know, that little 1%, if that makes sense. So, um, so Jack, I don't know if you have anything to, think, to speak to that, you know, if you think about what an incoming player we should expect um, coming into to, uh, being a part of the Scott family. Uh, I mean, the only thing to add to that I, is the, like, the motto, we work hard. It's what you got to expect. We do work hard, and we work for that 1% every day. I think coming in, you can have a little bit of an idea of, like, how much work you have to put in, but when you're together in a group, you just get pushed by every other, like, teammate that you have to work that harder, that little bit harder. All right. Thanks for sharing that, Jack. Um, I think the other thing, the expectation is, no, you're going to be cared for. Um, you know, that goes without saying, but I think that's one thing we do pretty uniquely is the amount of care we give give our guys and, and the intentionality we provide to develop positive relationships. You know, we're all about that that family positive relationship. So that's an expectation um, that, you know, people coming in should know that they're going to be a part of that. So, For sure, for sure. I definitely have most of my friends from the from the team. It's not limited to the team, but it's definitely. No, I know, I know, I know. The dude's just left DC, so that's a that's a fun thing. I I'm envious. So. Yeah, I mean, a good segue for like working hard and everything. Um, when it comes to the pitch, it's evident there's an emphasis on intensity. Can you talk about the style of play you want the team to have? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, so obviously, Jackie addressed the, the the hard work statement, and the question itself lends it to, um, you know, why we play intensely and how we do that. So I think the first thing, we, we like to play on the front foot. It's a very um, dynamic pressing, kind of in-your-face um, type of play. Uh, it's proactive, and I think our guys like that as opposed to, well, look, Jack, maybe you watched Liverpool versus Tottenham yesterday. Did you watch that at all? I watched a little bit of it. Like two opposite teams, right? You got one that's full throttle, going, 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 and then Tottenham, like 10 guys behind the ball. Their two forwards are, like, you know, almost on top of the 18 as well. and don't get me wrong, they create a ton of threatening opportunities, but we're a little bit opposite of that. You know, can we be a bit more proactive with our play? So um, it's a lot of intensity. Can we live in transition, you know, lose it, win it right back, and then can we exploit the back of the defense or change the point of attack to go forward? Um, as you know, we, we play a 4-3-3. Three, three. I think that suits our personnel, but we're not wed to that. Sometimes that's a 4-2-3-1, things of that nature. And I think as I've matured as a coach and, and we've established more of our culture, it's going to give us a bit more freedom to be creative. And, um, you know, for you, Jack, you know, being able to give you some, some reins to, to play that 10 creative role to, to pull some strings and get yourself in scoring situations and, and things like that. Um, 
it's it's a possession with a purpose. Uh, as we talk about that, you know, I was reading something about Man City, like I'm tired of watching them just pass the ball around and play keep away. You know, let's let's possess it and then look to get behind. Let's possess with a purpose, up back wide, up back through, combination play. Um, you know, can we get our outside backs involved, you know, whipping crosses in? Can we combine with you and our, whoever the nine is to, to exchange positions, things like that? So um, very active, very high tempo. And, and as you know, we play a tough schedule and we try to go toe to toe with those teams. And, um, you know, two seasons ago, like we did a phenomenal job just, uh, you know, ball didn't bounce our way and just a little bit short on some of those tight games. But but we're there. And I think our, our culture and um, our style of play have lent that to that. And I think if you think about the way we play and you think about our culture, it's family oriented. What we do would not work if guys weren't bought into each other. You know, the, the amount of running and the pressing and the intensity, um, it's kind of a, a familial thing. I mean, it has to be collective. Otherwise, it doesn't work very well. So uh, for me, the two, the two go hand in hand. Yeah, definitely. I, I totally agree with all that. I think that playing together is like one of the most important things. I mean, being in the system, like especially for pressing, if you're not working with the other person who's pressing with you, it doesn't work. And I think that we do a really good job with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's fun. I think it's fun anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's, pretty, it's pretty fun when it works. And it does. It does. No, and like you said, when it works. I mean, there's times where we get broken down. I mean, that's that's the nature of, of doing that. And, yeah, leave yourself exposed. And we've got a – that's one of the reasons we, I think, struggled against some teams two years ago. And, you know, we'll, we'll fix that and we'll learn from that and move forward. You know, I think that – that growth, you know, that was a failure, but also a success in a lot of ways. You know, we, we've learned about it, Jack, you're shaking your head like coach. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So having that, that growth mindset, I think is important as we look at how we press or how we attack, how we defend, like how can we constantly be evolving and changing to become the best version of ourselves? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. All right. So contests are played at Carl Dale Memorial field. Okay. Uh, the team also has access to the Scott Center and John P. Papp Stadium. What stands out to you about our home field and those extra amenities? Uh, I love it. I like grass. Um, you know, right now, Jack, it is pristine. Nobody has played on it. So it's in, uh, it's in great shape right now. Um, and as you know, I mean, the reality of having grass is, is, you know, the weather in Ohio can be super nice. And sometimes we can get some, get some rain that makes it a little bit chunky and soft and, and cuts up a little bit, but um, we're very fortunate and blessed to have that. And, you know, with the new shed and having access to the equipment right there has been super nice um, that the college and, and people that support the college um, have been able to do that for the program. Uh, the other piece, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that it's just ours and the women's, you know, obviously other programs maybe in the spring get on there, but it's, you know, it's soccer and that's, that's nice to have that facility. And, you know, we walk out our locker room and we're right there, you know? Um, and then conversely, if we need to get on the turf, we're able to do that. Um, that's always fun to get on the lights a little bit. And if we're training to go play at a Capitol or Wittenberg or an Allegheny, we have the ability to get on the turf, which is nice that um, the college has made avenues to do that, that we can share that it's not just about our program or X, Y, and Z program that we're in it together to, to use those facilities. And then the Scott Center, I think is second to none. You know, I, I count my blessings some days when I'm walking in and it's a picturesque sky and you walk in from the parking lot to the Scott Center. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. And again, we're spoiled rotten that, um, that we have a, a college that supports athletics in that way. And, you know, when you go in, I mean, you've been there between the lobby and the new, you know, the basketball arena. I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun and the strength rooms and indoor tracks. So we're, we're very lucky to have that. And then, um, you know, have our own space in the locker room that, we're able to utilize year round and, and have all those, um, uh, those nice perks, um, you know, as well. So, so it's a good thing it, to say the least, you know, I think the college takes care of us and there's a lot of good things uh, from that standpoint. Yeah, for sure. How about you, Jack? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I, I mean, I, I'm happy with our home field. Like when it's like coming in from the summer, it's, it's great. It's perfect. But Ohio weather definitely takes its toll on it. But I mean, that, that just makes, makes our, us work harder as a team. Yeah. To and there's been things. times, and I don't know if I've shared this, there's times where it's later in the season, the field's not as great. There's teams that get off the bus and like, we already won the game. You know, I can just, I hear them talk like, we got to play here, we got to do that. Like, it's like, I don't know what to tell you, you know? Um, I mean, we're, we're acclimated to it. So. Yes, for sure, for sure. So. so as we near the conclusion of the episode of Scott Talk, we're going to fire off some quick questions to you. And we want you to answer with the first thing that pops into your head. Does that sound good? Okay. I'll do it if you do it. Sure, sure. Okay. All right. So I'll answer and then you can answer. Is that fair? Yeah, that sounds fair to me. Perfect. All right. Go. 
All right, what's your favorite memory as from your days as a Division three student athlete? Oh, shoot. Okay. Um, just playing college athletics is, is a treat, you know, being able to, to be in that environment with some of my best friends. And then um, one that stands out, thankfully, uh, my senior year, we were very fortunate to, we were ranked as high as number two in the country. Um, we played Ohio Wesleyan at our place and it was Bonanza and there was a campus house that was right next to the field. Next time we're at Denison, I'll show you. And um, my friends lived there that year. And so they would just come out of the house and just support. And there was lots of people at the game. It was a very unique atmosphere. And then uh, to get the W against Ohio Wesleyan is, is pretty special. So that's one. And then making the NCAA tournament senior as well. It was back in the day when they only had four at large bids and um, we were fortunate to get one but it was when there was dial up internet. And so I remember we were sitting at a friend's place and like hitting the refresh button every like 30 seconds. And one of my teammates came and he goes, I know because his parents had nicer internet. And so they found out before we did. So um, that was pretty fun, but I, that is, that's a special thing. But I think just the day to day being a part of um, a competitive environment and getting to do something I love is, is, is pretty special and get to meet people that are lifelong friends. Um, not just in soccer, but also within the athletic department too. Yeah, for sure. I mean, for me, it's it's just being able to go to practice and games with all my friends, all my teammates. And then also just like out of soccer, like kind of just being a student, just being around them. I mean, shout out to Voss. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have met Vasily without, without the talk. Right, and that's and it's the walks of life, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. I already know the answer. Favorite professional soccer team? Oh, Liverpool, no question. <laughs> Inter Milan for me, for sure. All right, what's your favorite thing to do in Worcester? Um, hang out with my family? Does that count? I guess I could do that anywhere. So favorite thing to do in Worcester? Um, go for a run, go over to Spangler Park, do some hiking, uh, heart slurs I enjoy. Um, being outside, it's a pretty unique community. It's pretty green. Um, a lot of a lot of outside things to do, which is, which is good. Yeah, I mean, same here. I like just going on little adventure walks. Yeah. Some pals. So. What's your favorite non-athletic tradition at the College of Worcester? Favorite non-athletic tradition? Um, oh, I'm going to go two. I, I love the arch. It's iconic. I think it's pretty unique. Uh, I like the idea of filling it with snow. It's unfortunate that we didn't have students here right around when you guys left I mean we had about four inches and that would have been a good time to to fill it it actually snowed a fair amount and students would have been trying it yesterday no question we got another uh, few inches as well so that's a pretty cool one and students bring out you know the recycling bins or whatever from the room to do that um, the other one is I, I love I guess symposium on the Friday where campus shuts down there's no classes and all the students are presenting or have their posters up and you can walk around and there's you know most times it's a nice day because it's later in the spring. Um, that's one of my favorite traditions. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. The IS Symposium is awesome. Like, really cool. I I got to experience it for two years. So it was pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. Or one year, technically. I also think bagpipes are cool. Um, that's yeah, pretty unique. Awesome. I know, you know, we tried to utilize that last year, but I love the idea of the kilt and the tartan plaid. And, you know, when we're practicing and they're practicing, you can hear the bagpipes across campus. It's pretty cool. It's pretty unique, to say the yeah, least. My parents love the. Yeah. All right. And finally, favorite spot on campus that isn't an athletic facility? Um, the Arch. Um, I do like, and this is on the athletic facility, but you know where the football field is, and there's that little kind of alcove that's, tucks up, that's tucked up in there um, that's across from the bleachers. That's a pretty, pretty neat little spot there I like as well. So how about you? What's your favorite spot? Probably just like right outside the arch as well. Like just the athletic or the academic one. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, and you know, you've done our arch runs that we try to do every spring. Um, it's so fun. Like when the, the only thing on campus is the, the arch it's lit up and then you, you know, run through. And um, I, I just love that. You know, I, maybe I've told you this before on a lot of game days, I try to run down into town and then run up, you know, I feel like Rocky Balboa going through the arch and um, it's just a pretty, unique thing it's it's picturesque and then getting the other side in the oak grove is pretty cool so uh, that's def that's definitely the uh the top part for me yeah yeah i love the arch especially it, like you said when it's lit up yeah we're the only people are awake um thank you so much for joining us today on scott talk cozy 
You bet, Jack. You bet. I appreciate doing it and uh, being a leader on campus and a leader in the program and uh, helping out. So have a, have a great holiday. Enjoy your family and be safe, all right? You too, Coach. Will do.